Hi guys and welcome back to the channel. A little while ago I made a very popular video about how to set up your R5 for photography to get the absolute most out of it in the field. However, in that video I didn't talk too much about which video settings to use and how to set up the autofocus for video. So I want to change that today and show you exactly how to set up your R5 so you can take amazing videos of yourself and all those beautiful animals out there in the wild. When it comes to the R5, it's hands down the best hybrid photo and video camera that I've ever used. Often I'm out in the field, I'm taking photos, but then I also want to take some video of the same scene to show you in a YouTube video, for instance. So the ability to really quickly twitch between photo and video is very important for me. What makes the R5 special in this regard? It's the few design changes that Canon made on this camera, in particularly giving me a few buttons at the top like that MFN button and that record button up here that really make a big difference in your workflow and your ability to really quickly change between photo and video. So before we get into the nitty gritty of the menu, we're gonna make a few changes on the R5 to set it up perfectly for video and giving you the ability to really quickly switch between photo and video. The first thing we need to do for that is assign something to this button at the top, the MFN button. What we want to do is go into the menu, go into the orange custom menu number three, and then go down to customize buttons. And in there we scroll down until we see the little MFN button. And then for photo and video, we're gonna go into the menu and change it to switch between photo and video. Make sure you don't actually get stuck on just picking movie recording. That's not what you want. You want to assign switching between photo and movie mode to that button. So once you've done that, if you have the camera in your hand in the field, all you have to do to switch between photo and video is click that little button at the top and it instantly switches to your last video mode that you have activated. And then when you press it again, it switches back to your photo mode that you were in previously. So that's really, really cool and the fastest way I've ever seen on any camera to switch between photo and video. However, it doesn't stop there because the R5 also has this really cool record button right at the top up there and this button also works really well and much better than on most other cameras because what this button does is when you press it in photo mode it instantly starts recording with which whatever settings you've dialed in in custom function 3 of your video menu why is that important and why is that really great because now at the start of every day i go out for instance i'm in the forest I set up whichever settings are correct for that day as custom function number three. So now I know that whenever I press the red button on top of the camera, my camera will instantly start filming with the correct settings for that day. So I don't even have to switch to video, change my settings and waste some time. No, I can take some photos, press the red record button. It will instantly record with the settings of custom function number three in the video mode. And if I press it again, it stops and instantly jumps back to photo mode. Whatever is custom function number three becomes quite important because you want to make that your go-to mode for whatever settings you use the most, but I'll show you later on how to do that. So let's get into the menu and some of the finer details. The first one I want to talk about is the autofocus. We want to set it up a certain way. In video, you want the camera to continuously track your subject, whether that's me in this video or an animal out there in the field. You want the camera to automatically and continuously focus on your subject. This is something that's really annoying in photo mode because what usually happens is that your camera focuses on the background, but in video mode, especially when you're filming yourself, for instance, or tracking an animal, you want the camera to continuously focus by itself. So we need to set up continuous focus where the camera just continuously focuses in servo mode and tracks whatever you want to track. Also, we want to use eye detect because we want the camera to grab the subject like my eyes in this video or the animal out there in the field and track it by itself. It's very hard if you try to do like manual focus when you're doing like a lot of handheld video like what I do if I have a big lens and I'm filming and I'm hand holding it's very difficult to try and do manual focus or if you're pressing a button to focus on the back of the camera it will just make it very hard to keep the video still and introduce a lot more shake so what I like to do is have the camera track my subject and also have the eye checking enabled so I can fully focus on just 
holding the camera still in front of my face. If for some reason your R5 doesn't really want to focus on what you want to focus on in video mode, there are two tricks. You have to remember the autofocus in video mode is not as fast as in photo mode. So the first trick is you press your MFN button. See another reason why it's so important that you can easily switch between photo and video. Jump to photo mode, focus on your subject, and then jump back and press record or press record right away and the camera will instantly focus on the subject that you're focused on. What's very difficult once video autofocus kind of jumped onto the background or on something else is actually to get it off and get onto another subject because it's quite slow. So I think it's much better to quickly jump to photo mode, pre-focus on whatever you want to focus on and then press record. If for some reason that still doesn't work, you can also hold the camera in front of you. You will see the video on the back of your screen and then you can tap on the rear screen and the camera will start focusing on whatever you tapped on and then track that area and that also works very well. It's not as easy if you're hand holding and you're trying to tap something on the back of the camera but with these two methods I basically always get my subject in focus. So let's set up the first menu, autofocus menu one, the pink menu. What we want to do in here is we select autofocus mode face tracking, subject to detect either animals or people depending on what we want to shoot on but we talk about more on that when later when we set up the custom functions eye detection we want to enable that and then what i just talked about we want to enable the movie servo af because we want to continuously have the camera track our subject and then we jump to the third autofocus menu in the pink one and we make a few changes here the first one is the movie servo af speed i have set it to always on and the AF speed, I just left it on the default. Secondly, I've changed the movie servo AF tracking sensitivity and set it down to being locked on a little bit more because once a camera is locked onto my face, for instance, or once it's locked on to a bird, I don't really want it to quickly jump off to like a branch or something. So it has worked for me quite well to have it set to a setting that's a little bit more locked on and I chose minus two and that has usually worked quite well. I also enable the electronic manual focus. So when the focus is engaged, I can still manually focus. This is something that you otherwise can't do, especially with RF lenses. And then I also change the switching track subject and I change it from one to zero because I also don't want the camera to quickly get confused. If you're shooting something where you don't mind the camera jumping to different things, that might be all right. But for instance, if I'm filming myself in this video, I don't want the camera to switch onto anything else other than my face. Only if I hold the camera really far forward, I want it to eventually jump onto the camera and then back onto my face. But I don't really want to hold the camera up and it instantly jumps onto the camera. No, I want it to stay onto my face even if I quickly hold the camera up and down. So same is true for bird in the branches. You don't want the camera to see the bird, see a branch and then jump onto the bird, jump onto the branch and back and forth. No, you want to have the camera stay onto what you locked on. And that's pretty much all the changes that I've made for the autofocus. All the other things are pretty much left in the standard settings. Before we get to the red shooting menu, we quickly have to make one decision in the yellow menu. And that is, do we want to shoot in PAL or NTSC? And depending where you live, this is important when you shoot inside. For instance, if I'm in here and I'm shooting at 30 frames per second, you can see the lights flickering. If you're outside, this really doesn't matter, but you're inside working with lights like I'm doing now, you need to have the standard. So if you're in North America, you likely need to have NTSC. And if you're in pretty much everywhere else in the world, you will need to set your camera to PAL. So if I'm going through the red shooting menu now, you will see that all my values are in PAL. So for instance, 25 frames a second, 50 frames a second, 100 frames a second. In the red shooting menu is also where it can get a bit confusing when it comes to picking the right movie mode that you want to film in, whether it's 4K, 8K or full HD or 120 frames per second or 4K high quality mode. There's a lot of different modes. You can also do movie cropping. So in that menu, you can quickly get lost. And it's one of the key reasons that I'm using all the custom functions later on where I'll show you how to select the key settings that you need without always having to go into this menu and really tediously change all the settings. Out of the box, you can see that you have 8K available, 4K and full HD and different qualities at the bottom. The U and the D mean. D means it's a little bit wider. 4K D is 4096 
pixel wide and 4K used 3840 pixel. Not a huge difference, but sometimes I just like to have a little bit more space on the edge just in case. When it comes down there to all eye or IPB, I would always recommend to shoot in all eye because it's much better quality overall, but the files are also a lot larger. So this is something you have to keep in mind. If you're really after small files, you don't care as much about the quality, you select IPB, but if you want better quality, all eye is definitely the better thing to choose. Now you might say, but where's the 4K high quality mode? Where's the 4K 120 frames per second? Well, this is where it gets a little bit complicated on the R5 because you have to go back out of this menu. If we want to have the 120 frames or 100 frames per second, we have to now go down here to high frame rate and enable. And now we have to go back up and we see that all we can select now is 4KD or 4KU or Full HD and then the 100 in my case or 120 frames per second. All the other video modes are disabled if you enable the high frame rate. And to get all the other video modes back, you have to get back out and disable the high frame rate. Now you might say, I've heard all about this great 4K high quality mode. How do I get that? Well, we have to go down here, 4K HQ mode. Currently it's disabled. We have to enable it, then go back up here but now all video functions have disappeared other than the 4KD, 4KU in the high quality mode. And if you want the other functions back, you have to disable it. Now you might say, how do I get movie cropping? We have to go one menu back further. So back to the starting menu, go to movie cropping, enable it. And if we go back now, we can see we only have the normal 4KD and the normal 4KU and Full HD available, but we don't have 8K or 4K high quality available. This is not much fun if you quickly want to change something in the field and quite tedious to do. And this is why I like to use the custom functions because I can program different modes with different settings. So I can just change it with the click of one or two buttons rather than going through this menu and clicking a hundred different things to actually change the format. And my go-to on the R5, what I also set as custom function number three is the 4K high quality mode in the D, so the wider frame. Another thing you can see here is the audio recording. When it comes to that, I'd say if you're using the internal camera mic, put it on auto. If you're using an external mic like I'm using now, you actually have to work with the camera and the audio and whichever microphone you're using to actually figure out what settings you have to use. And then you usually have to use some manual settings, but it really depends on the microphone because you want to set it up in a way that you're not clipping your audio, for instance, or it's like super quiet and you have to lift it up later on when you're editing and then you're introducing like a lot of noise. I must say for most of my bird videos, I've actually been using the internal mic, even in the field, because oftentimes I can't really be bothered having a big, external like a shotgun microphone on my camera when I also want to do stills. If I only do video, I'd probably take another microphone, but if I want to do photo and video and walk around, run around, then often I just use the internal mic and it actually has a surprisingly decent quality. In the next menu, I basically left everything the same. And then the third shooting menu is also a very important one because here we first have to decide what white balance do we want to use? Do we want to use auto white balance or manual white balance? I usually use a manual white balance because I like the full control and I don't want the camera to switch anything when I'm filming. It's the same reason, for instance, that I always shoot in full manual video mode because I do not want the camera to adjust anything mid video. Another important thing to decide here, and I already talked about a little bit in my video about how to film wildlife in the field is, do we want to film in C log, Canon log, or do we want to film in the, just a standard format? If you're filming in C log, it means you're basically filming without contrast. Your video looks quite flat and gray, as you can see now. But then afterwards, you have to do a lot of editing and adding contrast and blacks and different colors to actually make it look good. It's not that difficult, but it's definitely another step. And you also have to remember, if you're not using an external recorder and recording that C log internally, the files are very difficult to edit on the R5 and require very fast computers. And even on like a super fast M1 Max MacBook Pro or like this really powerful computer behind me, they're quite struggling and I often have to use proxies to use like a large Canon log file that comes out of the R5. So if you want to get the maximum quality, maximum dynamic range, C log is definitely the right option for you, but you have to be aware that you have to edit your files 
and they're much harder to edit. The other option is if you don't want to do much editing at all, but have more limited dynamic range, kind of like shooting in JPEG, is if you deactivate C-Log and then just have the normal video. And what you have to do there then is you have to select a picture style and that picture style will actually affect how your video looks. I like to select a neutral color profile because it still gives me the most scope in the editing process. But I've also used like the standard profile for instance. It has a little bit of sharpening and the colors are a little bit more vibrant. I'd be careful to use like a too crazy mode then because then it might be hard to go back and make changes and skin colors might look really funny. So overall, I'd say if you're not shooting in C-Log, just do neutral with no sharpening and then just apply the sharpening later on in post-production. But you could also have a little bit of sharpening in there because that might allow you to have a little bit better output video straight away. But I'm always careful because I don't want to accidentally over sharpen my video because then it's something you can't fix anymore. With If you just sharpen it afterwards, you can control it a little bit more. So let's talk about what makes the R5 quite unique besides the ability to quickly switch between photo and video. And that's that it has custom functions in video mode and in photo mode. So it has three custom functions that you can assign things to in photo mode and also three custom functions that you can assign different settings to in video mode. And I'll show you a trick how you can also get a sneaky fourth one in the video mode. So this is something that I highly value and it actually helps you to navigate through the different settings in the camera because you set it up once, put different settings to different custom functions and then you basically never have to go into that annoying red menu again and fiddle with all the different settings there because I can set one custom function to 8K, one custom function to 4K and one custom function to like 4K cropped or 4K 120 frames per second, for instance. And then instead of going into the menu, I can just click a couple buttons on top of the camera and I have all the settings that I need available right away. Remember at the start, I said this red record button at the top here records in custom function three. So this has to be our go to custom function and whatever setting we want to record in the most, I would save as custom function three because then we can quickly while for taking photos, press the red record button and record in whatever we've set up as custom function three. So in my case, I like to shoot in 4K high quality mode as my go-to mode at 25 frames per second. And now I want to save that with all the other settings as a custom function. So I'm going to manual video mode because I want to shoot in manual. I want to be able to change all the settings and not have the camera interfere by making my video suddenly darker or brighter. So manual white balance, manual mode. And now we have to select all the settings that we want to have when it comes to custom function three in the manual mode. So first we go into the red menu, select 4K high quality mode, 4K D, 25 frames per second. Then I go in and dial in 50th of a second as my shutter speed, use my lens wide open, and then set ISO 800 as my base because I also select C-Log3 as my file format. So now that I've done that, I have 4K 25 frames per second, 50th of a second as my shutter speed because that's double my frame rate, and I selected C-Log3. Now I have to go in and change all the autofocus settings. Eye checking is my autofocus method, subject to detect animals, eye detection, enabled, movie servo autofocus enabled, and then in the next settings, movie servo speed will leave how it is, movie servo tracking sensitivity, set it to minus two. I also enable the electronic manual focus, switch track subjects to zero, and then we're basically good to go when it comes to autofocus and all the other settings. So now I'm gonna go into the yellow menu number five, where it says custom shooting mode one to three. And then I go to register settings and then I can select where what I've just dialed in, I want to save to. In our case, we want to save it to custom mode three and then we click okay. And now all the settings we've just dialed in are saved as custom mode three. So it will be manual mode, manual white balance, C-Log three, 4K 25 frames per second, high quality mode, animal eye tracking, continuous tracking and so on. So what I would do now, for instance, I would go back and instead of 4K high quality, I'm now selecting 4K high frame rate, 
100 frames per second in my case. Put that in, leave all the other settings the same. The only thing I will change now because I have 100 frames per second, I change my shutter speed to 200th of a second, leave ISO 800 in the wide open of my lens. Now I'll go back to the custom shooting menu and save those settings as custom function number two. And now you can decide, do you want 8K or for instance 4K with the crop mode as custom function one. In my case, I sometimes find it valuable if the bird's a bit further away, that I can zoom in a bit and I can either do that with 8K but then the files are very big and the camera overheats quickly so often I resort to using 4K with the cropping. This time I select 4KD and I select movie cropping. So now I go back, save that as custom function one and now I have 4K cropped as custom function one, 4K high quality as custom function three and 4K 120 frames per second as custom function number two. All have the same underlying settings like the bird eye tracking and all the autofocus that we talked about previously. There's one more important thing in the menu. If we go to the yellow menu and go to custom shooting mode, so yellow menu number five, there's one strange sounding setting at the bottom that says auto update settings. This is quite interesting because if the auto update settings is disabled, it means whichever settings you save as a custom function will remain the same. So if I switch from photo to video mode to certain custom functions, change all my settings like ISO, exposure, shutter speed, and so on, those settings will not save. And if I switch back to photo mode, they will be gone. And if I switch back to video mode, I will have the old settings that are initially saved as the custom function available. So with it disabled, nothing saves and only the initial settings that you saved remain as your custom functions. However, if you enable the auto update settings, it means that the camera automatically will always save any changes that you make to a custom function. So if I click the MFN button, switch to video, for instance, custom function three, change the shutter speed, change my exposure, change my ISO, and make some changes in the menu, and then click back out of it into photo mode, the R5 will save all changes as my new custom function number three. So having auto update settings enabled actually really helps me in the field, because at the beginning of a shoot, I change over to video mode by pressing the MFN button, go to custom function number three, and dial in all the correct settings that I want to shoot in on that given day. And then I click back the MFN button into photo mode. So now whenever I press the red record button on top of the camera, the R5 will start recording with the settings that I just dialed in because it automatically saved them. So personally, I find that very valuable. I know some people would prefer to always have the same settings back there, but I think it makes a lot of sense to have the custom functions adjust to whatever latest changes you made. You just have to remember that if you change anything you don't want to keep, that the camera will save that as well. But overall, I think this is a function that should definitely be enabled and make your life a lot easier. So now let me tell you how you can also have a sneaky fourth custom function mode. Because when I'm filming myself now, I don't want everything set to animals. But because I'm using a lot of different video in the field, I need the three custom functions to be set to different animal modes. So now that we use the manual mode to set up our custom functions, the manual mode actually doesn't serve any purpose anymore. So what we can do now is we can also assign different settings to the video manual mode. And the R5 will also remember these settings. So basically the manual mode can now also be our fourth setting. So in this case, because I want to use it to film myself, I set it to 4K high quality, 25 frames per second, shutter speed to 50th of a second, wide open, ISO 800, Canon Log 3. And now when it comes to the autofocus, this is where it gets interesting. AF method, eye tracking, subject to detect people, eye detection enabled, movie servo enabled, and everything else I also leave the same like the tracking edge sensitivity and so on. But now what I do, I just leave this as my manual mode. I don't make any changes, I don't save this as a custom function, but whenever I select the video manual mode in the camera now, it will remember these settings and 
If I want to do YouTube video, I know I go to video manual mode. If I want to film birds in the field, I know I go to custom function three as my go-to. If I want slow motion, I go to custom function two. And if I want 8K or 4K cropped, I go to custom function mode one, depending on what I've saved there. Personally, because I can't always decide, I've actually have custom function one on 8K on one of the R5, and on the other R5, I have the 4K crop mode on. So. Whichever camera I use, I have to remember which mode I dialed on, but this is how I've set up and it works very well for me in the field. And it allows me to have all these different modes really quickly available with the click of just one button. Basically, I just go to video mode, press the mode dial, dial to the right mode, and then I have whichever setting I need, whether I want to film people or want to film birds or want to do slow motion or 8K. So this makes it so much easier for me than just going through the menu all the time. And it's one of the things why I really love the R5 for filming. I hope this video will help you to set up your own R5 perfectly for video and film those great animals or yourself out there in the field. If you haven't done so already, make sure to also check out my video on how to set up your R5 for photography because something like the double back button autofocusing method is a real game changer out there in the field. And if you enjoy taking bird photos, I would also highly recommend that you check out my pro sets and especially my masterclass that I've linked for you down there in the description. It's a real must see if you want to make your own bird images look absolutely amazing. Other than that, please give me a thumbs up for the video, leave me a comment with your thoughts and subscribe to the channel and I will see you guys in my next video very soon. Enjoy filming out there. Bye.